Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I want to show you my current source and it's from Keatley and it's the Keatley 224 and it is just in. It, uh, I found it on eBay and it came from Canada and unbelievably it just arrived in three days. So the seller really uh, did a good job finding a good shipper. It was shipped by uh, UPS and uh, so let's see there's only one thing it's 110 volts uh, a few days ago i show you already a little bit my keatley collection i have there the 199 and the 195 you already saw my 199 here and the 177 and in my other video i clean up the 175 so that's all good i already show you a little, a little bit quick view on my uh, voltage uh, source also and uh, so these two devices are uh, kind of what uh, this thing can do. This is also a little voltage source, only this one is much more precise and they can do a lot lower values. If you, um, you really have uh, mini volts, micro volts that can, uh, this Kitley can do. This is 230, I'm going to show you another time. Uh, but this one from Canada. The Kitley 224 programmable current source. And uh, let's have a closer look. One thing you need to be careful Canada is 110 volts. At least uh, this one is set up for uh, 110. So we try to change that. But for my quick test, I would just use a converter. I have a converter to, uh, to get my 230 down to 110. So we can test it safely without doing any modification. And after that, when we see the tests are good, I try to see if in the inside I can maybe just switch over the transformer to 230 or 250. That's probably possible. The Keatley 224 programmable current source. There are still some stickers. Even the calibration sticker right here. It was calibrated in uh, 2010. And the calibration expires 2012, it says. Well, Keatley says you need to do this every year, but apparently this calibration agency said two years is also good. Nice fit. Well, they have the same size as the 199 and the 230. It is sort of heavy because it has a big power supply. And here we have the output, this is all uh, shielding. And this BNC, which actually is a 3 ox it's a double shielded BNC connector. And well, I saw in the sig <laughs> signal path, the other YouTube channel, I saw that um, these are actually very old uh, 3 ox connections because the new 3 ox also has three pins. Um, but the good thing with the two pins is I can just, if I, Leave this short here, and I leave that there. I can use a standard BNC, so I don't need any converter. I looked already on the internet for converters. They are between $40 up to $150. And if you're not going to measure currents in the microamps, then um, you probably are fine with the standard BNC. So I will use that for a test. Well, let's see if it powers on. So as I said, this one is 110. So you need to be careful. The, the 230 plug just fits in also. Uh, I was sent this special 110 volts plug. Uh, just to make sure that I didn't make that mistake, I think. So the seller is also smart. He knew he was sending from Canada to the Netherlands. So I will need to use my power converter and I will, I have one right here. I will uh, do a review on that one another time. I'm starting it. Where is my plug? Let me see, 110 volts, 50 hertz, output on. Okay, that should give me 110 volts. Yes, it starts. 
Okay. It is using 30 watts. Let me see. I have here a BNC cable with two pins for the multimeter. Ah, let's get the sick one there also. I still need to get it. Kitty says you need to power it on for an hour before it is uh, accurate. And uh, you can use it to calibrate 4.5 millimeters also. But uh, let's we try to get it better. Uh, I can put it on top and put it in the middle. Did I put power? No. I need power. Well, it all needs to be switched on for a while, but we're just gonna have a quick test. Uh, voltage limit, you can set the voltage limits because it's trying to get um, uh, trying to get the current that you're setting, but if your impedance is very high, like open, like this, it can go up to 100 volts. I think I can even set it to 100. So now the volt, so if I touch it now, it's really 100 volts, so you don't want to do that. So I, it's, by default, it's 3 volts. I will do that. And current limit, we don't source let's put exponent so three enter no uh, exponent three enter one enter so this should be one milliamp uh, dc current okay uh, like this output on yes 0.999143 that is uh, almost 1 milliamp and it's about this just a switch on so let's do 10, 10 milliamps yes 100 I think that is the maximum okay almost 100 not bad at all and we can also do minus six so then we are in the micro uh, amps so if i switch it over now it will go to 100 micro uh, exponent six enter here it is 100 micro cool we can even do one micro i'm not sure my meter does it but let's see yeah look at that one micro amp cool so this is a lot uh, better than the <laughs> LBO2, but uh, yeah, cool. And um, let's switch it off. I think we should be able to measure also the voltage limit. So if I switch this one to DC volts, it is now open. So it should put this voltage limit. So it should go to, yeah, almost 3 volts. And if I do 100 volts, wow, well, so depending on my impedance. And that is because of the current setting, because that one is very low. So if I change it now to exponent 3, and I put here uh, 100 microamps. It will go completely to 100 volt. So you cannot touch it now because that will hurt. Okay, cool. So that all seems to work uh, fine. So uh, before we start calibrating or just uh, start to do things, let's see if we can get it to uh, 230 volts. So um, I don't need to think because the plug just fits in there and then it will immediately be broken. 
So let's have a look. Maybe it is just that. Let me switch that off. There is a seal from our Aritsu and it it has been open I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's just open the top. Be careful touching the caps inside because they are at least filled up to 200 volts we saw. Okay. I see it has the IEEE board, the option. Well, uh, I, will, I will zoom in. You can also have a look. And then we try to see the transformer. Here it is open. It actually looks quite modern. And this is the 224. And, and I know there is also a 2220. Both are uh, current uh, sources. And I don't necessarily know what is the difference between two, the two of them. Maybe the 224 is just a newer version. But... Uh, yeah, they look quite similar. Here is the... I need to be careful with statics. I will get my bracelet. I have been told uh, the system is mostly analog. Except for the typer and uh, the number typing, data entry. But the rest is all analog. And some of the components are sensitive for statics. So, just wearing now my uh, bracelet. Um, yeah, I see here is the IEEE interface, and it is a real national instrument chip, so they have a proper adapter, but we need to take the adapter out, just to see in the bottom. Well, it's just unscrewing the two screws here from the IEEE connector. I see there is one screw also here. Let's take it off. Then this goes. It looks very nice. It looks quite modern. Uh, yeah, let's see if maybe there is even a switch. And the board says 1982. Okay. Well, it seems that underneath the line filter right here, there is a switch. And I try to zoom in, but I think here on the board it says 230. And that means I can just flip the switch. See, it says 230, right there, and the switch is put to the other side. So let me see if I can just switch that over. Clock. Okay, maybe this is it, all it needs. Okay, hopefully that is just this. I will just start with 110, 50 hertz, and... Uh, Let's see, it should be too low. Yes, the fan goes, but it is very low. So it did change. So let me go to 220, 220, 50 Hz on. That look good. Okay, well then, that is probably good. I can switch that off. Let get me the normal power cord.
And I need that. That works. Uh, let's just immediately adjust it. I will switch this on for a while. I will check the, I think with the, I already had a little look at the manual. And when you calibrate, uh, you need to do it with the precision resistor. And then you measure the voltage over that resistor. Um, and I don't really understand why you need to do that because you can also just measure the current, I would say. So let's have a look. Okay, I've been trying to calibrate it a little bit based on the cyclant. I'm now at the lower limit of the cyclant, so that value will not be precise. But we are here at uh, one micro, one micro amp. So let's go to 10. No, close enough. 100 micro. Now look at that. Uh, 1000. That's a milli. It will switch. Yes. Ten milliamps and one hundred milliamps. I would say that is good. Okay, that was super cool. That was very easy to calibrate. There are just some holes in the top, and it just says you need to do. Uh, well, it's the two micro, twenty micro, two hundred micro, and the same for the millis, and uh, that is it. And that's also immediately the difference between the 220 and the 224. This is the 224. Uh, they are both from 82, I think. And uh, only the 220 has uh, also the nano amps. So, um, well, this one uh, lowest value here is uh, what we saw, one micro. But um, in the 220, it is one nano amp, so that one needs to be a lot, lot more precise. And then, um, then it really makes sense if you have the triac uh, connections or not. So uh, for me, this is uh, is good enough because uh, uh, one micro amp is all, already so little, and they both go up to uh, 101 milliamp. They both do that. I try it also here. 100 works, 101 also, and uh, 102 of course fails, yeah. Cool. Okay, look at that. I now cleaned it. It is now not only calibrated, but it is now also super clean. Uh, the display was not scratched, so that was just some Windex, and it was actually in a pretty good uh, state. So, yeah, it is uh, not much fun showing you, because it is just good as it is. So that was it, the Kitli 224 programmable current uh, source. And this is a great help if I want to adjust uh, some of my older multimeters. And uh, this is a great addition also to uh, the, the programmable voltage source that I also have. And uh, that I show you later. For now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.